Nice. Well, g'day guys. I finally got these two bedside tables finished. Eventually, it's only taken me six months, but I think the proof is in the pudding and I reckon this is a pretty tasty pudding. So I'm gonna start this off by adding in some blocks to the inside of these side panels for a little bit of reinforcement on that thin floating panel and we'll take it from there. Enjoy. I want to glue in a few blocks here, here, and here. So I just put a little bit of glue on the back. Line it up with the center. Press them down. And we'll let the glue stiction stick them in there. All right, so with the sides of those legs all smoothed out, the tops leveled out, those carcasses are pretty much complete. The only thing I need to do is a little bit of sanding. I'm not gonna put you guys through that. So the next thing I need to do is, with this top panel, I need to cut it to size to put it on top. Now, at this stage, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really confident as to what size I wanna put it. It's a little bit thinner than what I'd like it to be because I'd like a 35 mil uh, overhang all the way around. I can't get that. So what I can do is I can put an inch all the way around or 25 mil and then 10 millimeters at the back or 3 eighths of an inch at the back. I think that'll look all right. And then from there, that'll give me a nice square top and I'll look at that, I'll see if I like it. But I think at this stage, I'm gonna put a gentle curve along the front edge only. And I think that will tie things together just nicely, bottom to top, top to bottom, left to right, up to down, etc., etc. So let's get this cut to length and width. Right about there.
and with a bit of luck, I've drilled deep enough to put a mark under the top. One there, one there, just one there, and one there. Got lucky. So then with a little bit of wax, they help it slip in there because these are a pain in the butt when they break and they're very easily broken. We want to make sure that's below the surface and it is and before i attach these tops i just want to enlarge these front holes to allow the bolt to wiggle backwards and forwards a little bit to allow for expansion and contraction so the top the back bolts won't move they'll just be vertical and the front bolts will be able to shift backwards and forwards a little bit it i'll give it uh, a few millimeters worth of clearance because it only needs to be able to expand from here to there What's that, 200 mil, so 1% of that's um, 2 millimetres, so a couple of mil, she'll be right, mate. So I've got a 9.5 mil drill in my drill, and I can just open up the, the hole. And what that does, since the back ones won't move, that holds the top from shifting sideways or torquing left or right. It just, it'll just expand and contract backwards and forwards. And this creates a really nice solid fixing that can be undone whenever you want. So if you need to refinish the top in a hundred years time, the guy that has to do it, because I'll be dead by then, the guy that has to do it, he'll love me for it. He'll just come through and say, too easy, mate, too easy. All right, so that looks good the way that that is, but it doesn't look as good as what it could be. Now, just like I've changed this top edge of the top with a gentle curve, I'm gonna change from my original plan and I wanna set these drawer fronts in from the face frame just that little bit. Something like that. Now what that does, it creates another level change on the front which creates highlights, lowlights and shadows which creates the interest. Now, just like I've got on the side here, I've got the leg, then it steps down into the the uh, frame and then it steps down again into the floating panel so you've got the two step downs now on the front I've got the leg I've got the frame I've got the leg it steps down to the frame and then it steps down to the draw fronts creating the two different step downs the two different level changes that's what I'm going to do I think it looks a lot better like that it's not what I would normally do but it just looks better than having it flush That just looks a little bit too boring to me. It's just too flat fronted. Even when I put the draw pulls on here, I think it's still gonna look a little bit too flat fronted. So set it in. Ooh, this middle drawer is very tight. Just like that, much better. So in order to achieve that, all I need to do is put a couple of draw stops in behind this frame that will connect or hit on this bottom lip of the drawer under the drawer bottom when I put the drawer bottoms in and it'll just stop it at the correct point which I have to put a little rebate on a block of timber one and a half mil back so that when this drawer goes in 
it goes in, it gets to flush and it keeps going three millimeters backwards and it will hit the draw stops just perfectly. So then we've got two little tabs that the drawers will butt into. That's it. And the good thing about having these drawers set in that little bit, instead of having them flush, is that A, it creates the highlights and lowlights, but it also means that I don't have to get everything perfectly aligned and in plane. It just needs to be pretty close. Like if this looks like it's three millimeters back and this looks like it's three millimeters back, but in fact, it's actually 2.9 here and 3.3 here, doesn't really matter because it looks about right. Whereas if it was, um, if this corner was flush and this one was sitting out a little bit or in a little bit, well, you can see that and you can feel it and it's just wrong. And so you have to go back and shave it all down just perfectly. Whereas that looks good is good i love it all right and just like that everything's been sanded up it's ready for finish it only took me about four weeks to get these things sanded up because i don't really enjoy sanding but mostly i'm suffering from a disease starting with l and ending with az it's all right though i've been told that it's pretty common so i'm not going to worry about that what i'm also not going to worry about is i'm not going to worry about putting finish on the inside of the cabinet i don't need to worry about it it's not necessary I'll be finishing this with Danish oil, which is boiled linseed oil, polyurethane and solvent mix. And the linseed oil off gases for several years. It basically off gases forever. And it creates a bit of a stink. So if I was to put that stuff on the inside of the cabinet, anything that I put into the drawers, your socks and jocks, they'll smell like linseed oil. So we don't want that. So, but I do want the drawers to be finished with something, not, not to any polish level, just, just to take away the raw timber feel. So I'll use a bit of blonde shellac for that, just on the sides, the back, and the inside of the drawer. The shellac doesn't smell for very long, it smells for maybe a week or so, and that's about it. And I'll also put the shellac on the underside of the top, just so that if you have to pick this unit up to move it out of the way so you can vacuum under it, which I would believe would be pretty common, I want that to be a sealed surface as well. I don't want it, I don't want this to be nice and shiny and sealed. And then you reach under, it's like, oh, that's not even finished, that's terrible. But I can't finish it with the Danish oil because even under here, that's inside of the cabinet, which will produce the smell inside the cabinet. So we can't have that. So Danish oil on the outside of the cabinet, shellac on the underside of the top and inside the drawers. Let's do it. All right, and then to finish the carcasses here, just gonna put the Danish oil on the side, the front and the other side, and nothing on the inside of the cabinet because it'll stink, it'll stink pretty bad. It'll stink just like it stinks now, which really sucks. Oh, not that yet, oh, wrong way. So what do I want back of the leak first? Side of the leg. Then I'll get a brush to get inside that internal corner, just a little bit easier. And I come back with my pad to basically mop up any of the excess finish that I slapped on there without a care in the world. And 
once again I'll get some oil onto the inside of this reveal around the floating panel there and because this oil is so thin it will be able to seep in behind the groove that's housing this floating panel and coat the surface hidden behind the groove so that if that panel was to shrink a little bit and expose unfinished timber well it's going to now be finished the other problem with that is that that finish is actually going to glue this floating panel into the groove just a little bit but the power of the timber will probably break the seal of the finish without breaking the timber probably hopefully more than likely i'd bet on it All right, enough yap yap, let's get this thing done. All right, so I've got seven coats of this finish up on the tops here and five coats on the carcass and on the drawer fronts. And everything's nice and smooth. I really quite like it. It's, it feels quite nice. And what I've gone and done, I've put a couple of coats on. I've just put it on there and then walked away, let it dry. The remaining coats, I've slapped it on there and then I've got a rag and wiped all the excess off within 10 minutes or so. It's given me this really nice smooth finish. It took seven coats to get the top up to where I wanted it and five coats on the drawer fronts and the carcass. But everything's just really nice, like nothing catches, it's all just smooth on my cotton jumper there. Really like it, really happy with it.
I've got to make sure that that hole is facing towards the other hole. Make sure there's no defects in this handle. Like there's one little spot right there. So that'll go to the bottom. Looking good. And just like that, they're all done. I'm really happy with the selection of draw handles that I've put on there. Though I think it would have been a little bit better if it wasn't so polished. Like this is a polished brass finish, solid brass finish. So what I can do there is I can remove the lacquer coating that they put on these finish on these brass handles, and that will allow the brass to age and uh, patina over time. So I might do that in the future, but at this point in time, I think they're just a little bit too shiny. But apart from that, they're all pretty good, except for the drawers. Some of these drawers are kind of sticky. So it's, they work. Yeah, kind of sticky. Now the reason for that is because it's a traditional drawer runner, any seasonal movement that I get because of the weather, that they swell or shrink. Now all the drawers have swollen just that little bit and so they're all a little bit sticky at, just at the back, back of the stroke there. So I could shave them all down a little bit more, but I think that I'm gonna leave it like this as is. Because they all work, they just don't work perfectly well right now but in summer when things dry out a little bit or when i put these up in the house rather than being out in the garage everything should shrink just that little bit just giving me that little bit extra clearance and so instead of removing material right now i might be able to just put it inside the house and it'll shrink and everything will turn out nice in the end but they are really really nice so thanks very much for watching thanks very much for sticking around with this series if you've watched all 400 videos in this series and yeah don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment down below and i will be back pretty soon with the next project smaller projects from now on none of this long-winded stuff anymore it's, it takes too much it's too much time on me it's too much time for you it's just too much time so thanks and adios